Hello again, everybody. This is Dan Clouser, and welcome back to the Journey of My Mother's Son podcast. Today I'm joined again with an old friend of mine, Jeff Potter, uh, who is in charge of the Potter Baseball Tour. We had did a podcast about a year ago, uh, talking specifically about the tour. Jeff, thanks for joining me today. Dan, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Love, uh, love getting together and chatting with you. Um, it's funny, you're in Maryland, um, and we're obviously in an RV, but the last time we got together, we got together <laughs> in my uh, old hometown of Reading, Pennsylvania, where you, uh, you carved out some time to sit down with me up in there. It was great to kind of you know, chat in person, the Zoom stuff is great, text messaging is great, but there's nothing like sitting down in front of an old friend and, and talking baseball. So um, this is... Uh, this is a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool time of year for you because you're getting ready for the tour. Um, I want to just briefly talk about that before we talk specifically about the big event that the tour is involved with this year. Um, but uh, this is the time of year where you know, I'm sure you're kind of running around and not getting less details together for the tour and, and all that sort of stuff. So just tell me a little bit about you know, how far are you away from the tour kicking off? I know it's right around the corner here, but you know, tell my guests what, what, uh, what is uh, – you know, kickoff time for the tour 2021. Yeah, well, Dan, we're going to start June 29th. That's about three weeks from now. So it's coming up really quickly. Uh, as you know, this will be the 12th year that we've uh, run the tour. It's hard to believe, you know, when we got together in 2010 and, uh, you know, we played a couple of games over the Reading Phillies uh, Stadium and all that good stuff. What great memories that was. But uh, we'll be going uh, June 29th. We'll go for 31 days. We'll go to uh, July 29th. So as you know, you know, I tried starting this six, eight months, you know, ago and organizing. And you know how everybody says, you know, oh, it's so far away. Now, all of a sudden, you know, everybody's trying to get a hold of me, change things. That You know how that goes. So uh, the, the last three weeks is going to be really interesting, the next three weeks. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it always is. It's that last minute. You know, you have, like you said, you have oh, yeah. six, eight months to put it together, but everything really comes together in the last two or three weeks as you're, <laughs> as you're leading up to it. It does. Yeah. yeah, I can't do anything about that either. You know how people are. Yep, no so, doubt about it. So, um, again, specifically, I want to have this conversation today about uh, an event that the tour is involved with this year, the tour is organizing, um, the world's largest game of catch. So, um, tell me a little bit about, you know, about the idea, about the concept and uh, the details and how some people can get involved in, in playing the world's largest game of catch. Yeah, uh, we think it's a really cool idea. Uh, we actually wanted to do it last year. And of course, with COVID and that, you know, we had a real lot hard problem justifying getting a couple thousand people at the same physical place. Uh, same thing this year, even though it's COVID seems to be uh, under control, uh, we still have that issue. So what we did was we just decided we're going to do it virtually and put people together from all over, which we think is actually, to be honest, a, a lot better idea because if you're, you know, if you have in one central location, you live five hours away, it doesn't do you much good because, you, you know, unless you make a special attempt to do that. So basically it's a uh, virtual locations all over the country. Uh, you, can, you can literally play catch from anywhere. I mean, when I say anywhere, Dan, I'm talking about your backyard, you know, so everybody who says I can't get here, I don't have time or whatever, uh, that's just a bunch of hogwash because take a ball, go back in your backyard for 10 minutes, play catch, and it's just all for a great organization, you know, uh, so it, it's kind of a really a, a cool thing. We're going to have about 50 to 100 virtual locations, uh, you know, on our sign up genius, but also there's, I've already talked to people all over the place that don't really have a virtual location. They're just doing it somewhere else. So, yeah, we're pretty excited about the whole thing. Yeah, that's cool. And, and uh, those virtual locations can literally be two people to 2,000 people um, getting together to have, to have a game of catch, correct? Yeah, that, that's correct, Dan. And uh, the neat thing is we're playing catch from only eight feet away. So what that means is this is open to everybody. I mean, all skill level, all ages, a grandparent with their granddaughter, grandson out there. Uh, Girl Scouts, church members, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, anybody can play this. There's really no excuse not to and say, well, gee, I, I'm not a ball player or whatever. So there's not going to be balls whizzing around from 60 feet away and people getting hit with balls and that. This is very structured. The whole point isn't necessarily how good of a ball player is. Yeah, it, the, the whole point is, you know, get together for a common goal. 
Yeah, I think uh, I think the dog got excited as you saw him moving around there in the background when <laughs> you started I did talking see about that, it. Yes. So, so maybe uh, maybe somebody can just go out and play catch with their dog that day at the same time. Maybe go. that's what maybe that's what Yuke was trying to tell us. Like, don't yep. don't let us out either. So, um, so that's pretty cool. So, the other really awesome concept about this isn't just you know about playing catch, but you're actually doing it for a cause. Um, so you're raising money for Cure Search. Um, tell me a little bit about that organization, how Potter Baseball Tour got involved with it, and then how it evolved into, you know, this is something that we can raise money for, for uh, you know, Cure Search. Yeah. Well, we have uh, uh, worked with Cure Search for about eight or nine years now. It all started in Butler, Pennsylvania. Uh, this, well, the second year of the tour, 2011, we went to Butler and we uh, ran a volleyball tournament. And, uh, you know, one of the recipients of the money of the tournament was a uh, young boy named Wesley Zablocki. And uh, we started doing things every year through the volleyball thing. Unfortunately, Wesley passed away a few years ago. Uh, I became very close with him, though. He was a kid, man, that would like, loved to play baseball. He played at East Butler, and he was out there, and he would play baseball, and he was going through cancer treatments, and it was just, it was just such a, a, a great story. And, uh, you know, but after he passed away, and even before that, the Zablocki family, his parents, uh, big proponents of Cure Search, and they actually do a hike every year. It's called the Ultimate Hike. Uh, and they hike about 25 miles, and they, uh, mom and dad, have raised over $100,000 for Cure Search. And we have done Cure Search every year, raised money in different ways. We've done our own hikes in the Pittsburgh area. We've done the volleyball, and we've done other things. So it's just a great cause, and it's a great uh, way to give back. Uh, they do research for pediatric cancer, and, you know, some of the stats are just mind-boggling, you know, when you think about it. You know, 3% of all money goes to uh, children's cancer. So 97% doesn't. So it's just, and I believe the number now is up to 47 children a day uh, find out they have cancer. So this is just a mind-boggling thing. It really is. And to see young kids, especially young kids, struggle with this and families and it's just, and, and Cure Search is it's just, just a great organization. They really are. So we're, we feel very proud and humble to, to be associated with them. And Cure Search is actually going to have their own virtual location at this uh, catch. So that's kind of cool where they're all going to kind of zoom together and, you know, and, and do that. So uh, we're, we're really excited about doing this. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I mean, like I said, the, the concept is cool, but anytime you're doing something and you're raising money and doing some good, um, that, that's awesome. So, um, how has the, uh, the response been so far for the virtual locations? Well, Dan, as you know, putting things together, you got all these people that are gung-ho, yeah, 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 and do nothing. Then you, then you're pleasantly surprised by these people that call you out of the blue and just say, hey, Coach Potter, I heard about this. I can put a bunch of people together. And you, then all of a sudden, you know, you're all excited. So, I'd say all in all, uh, we have a lot of procrastinators, and uh, but you know, you, you just you, then you just work through that. There's nothing you can do about someone who says they're going to do something. The only aggravating thing is that they approach you. It's not like you beat them over the head. They approach you, man. I think it's a great idea. I'm going to do this and this, and you know, life just uh, catches up with you. But overall, we have probably about I don't know 300 people signed up, which to me is great because. Some of the locations are actually signing up everybody, you know, on their own, and then they're just going to put one big list together and send a check for the whole thing. So I know there's a lot more people actually, quote, signed up, but actually on our registration, there's a couple hundred people. Uh, I'd say we have, you know, 20 really solid locations that are going to do a great thing there. And when I say solid, Dan, these people aren't just saying to people, you know, come out and play catch for 10 minutes and go home. They're actually putting an itinerary together. So, for instance, in Clearfield, Pennsylvania, uh, Dubois uh, has, has won like the junior, I don't know, uh, national baseball championship for like three years now. And they're, they're going to have some of the players there from Dubois to, to work with the kids. And they're having a DJ and music and home run derby. So they're actually putting an itinerary in Coppell, Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh and you know, some of these other places are, are putting, you know, itineraries and they're, they're totally behind the thing. They think it's really neat. So every day, you know, I wake up and I see people signed up and they're all pumped up. And then I get an email from someone saying, well, you know, I'm not sure we can do. 
and you know you just kind of keep you know you, you you do the steady course you know you just uh you know, focus and keep moving forward. That's all you can do. But uh, I'm really excited about it. I, I think whoever comes out, how many people come out, I think it's just a great concept. And I, I think we're going to raise some pretty good money for Cure Search. So I'm, I'm pretty, really excited about the whole thing. Yeah. So um, I don't think we talked about it, but how much does it cost for somebody to register and uh, get involved? Yeah, 12 and under is five bucks. Uh, uh, 13 and over is $10. So, you know, that, that's it. I mean, we're some of the stuff to be quite honest, we're on the honor system. Cause when you go into the sign up genius and sign up and sign up there, you pay a different way. You, uh, we, we're trying to make this as, as little maintenance as problem. Cause sometimes you get on these websites and trying to pay in credit card, it's a disaster. So basically you sign up and then you send money in. So you can send money into me, cash, check, zoom, uh, you, you know, uh, Venmo, you can send, send to Venmo, which most people do. And we're trying to make it easy. Whereas if, for instance, uh, an organization calls and says, Jeff, I got 50 kids and can I just send you one check? And that's as, absolutely fine. You know, just list the people to check. So we're trying to make that as easy as possible. It's very, very inexpensive uh, to do it. All the money goes to, uh, you know, the Cure Search. Nobody's making any money other than Cure Search. So it's, it's something that I think is really cool. And if people don't want to play catch and they just want to make a donation, they can do that. Another thing we're doing, which is really neat, we have a yoga girl who uh, we worked uh, with through the tour for years. So she's basically going to give people an hour of yoga if they'd like it, basically free. So if you sign up and pay your 10 bucks, you know, you can, you can stream with her and uh, online and she's doing a Facebook live and you get a free uh, hour of yoga, which is really cool. So she's making fun. Um, she's going to do it from 5.30 to 6.30, then everybody who's doing the yoga is then going to play catch. So we're just making this thing, you know, really, really a lot of fun. Yeah, that's cool. So if somebody just wants to make a donation or they register and they're, they're mailing the check into, um, where's the address they send it to and who's the, uh, who's the check get made out to? Yeah, well, the check is made out to me. The address is, uh, you know, my home address, which is, uh, you know, 2407 Killarney Terrace. That's in Odenton, Maryland, 21113. So they just send the check right to me. Uh, if they make it out to me or Cure Search or whatever, that, that's fine, whoever they make it out to. They can Venmo money, same thing to me. Uh, so that's kind of cool that uh, we try to make it, you know, as easy as possible for people. So, so people already have made donations saying, hey, Jeff, I can't make it. And another thing people can do is you can sponsor somebody. Let's say you have a business and you say, hey, I want to sponsor you know, five of my employees playing catch. You send a check in for 50 bucks. You pick five employees. You kind of make it a fun thing. And there you go. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So then at the, uh, <clears throat> at the end, Potter Baseball is going to present one large check, hopefully a very large check um, to Cure Search. Kind of helps uh, – their bookkeeping that they're getting one check as opposed to getting 300 checks from across the country. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. And uh, we're real close to the people there. So we know them really well. And you know, they suggested we do it that way. So uh, we've done this before, you know, we've done hikes and present them with a check and the same thing. So yeah, we're, we're, we're excited. We're really excited about it. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's very, very cool. Um, I think it's an awesome concept. I mean, you know, playing catch is, really the heartbeat of the game of baseball you know you go back to the movie field of dreams and you know hey dad can i have a catch so you know what what was it that kind of prompted this idea in the first place well dan you know we try to do something different on the tour every year i mean we've done some crazy things and we we've kind of never turned someone down from doing something you know we we started out as baseball only, as you know. Now we do a lot of community service, charity work. We do a lot of events. We do a hike every year. We do volleyball. We play basketball, three-on-three -three basketball. So we're always open to, to new things. And I just thought this would be a really cool thing. I mean, we've thought about doing a 24-hour ball game, and, you know, and stuff like that. But this, like you said, I mean, what kid has not played catch with his dad? And this is, you know, the – part of the thought of the tour is, is basically going back to its roots and making it innocent and fun again. And there's nothing that compares more to that than playing catch. So we just thought it was a great idea. 
a good way for people who really aren't on our tour, in other words, the places we go physically, uh, to be able to be part of the tour. So anyone anywhere can feel that they're part of the tour. So uh, it just seemed like the perfect thing. Yeah, no, I, I love the idea. Absolutely love it. I think it's cool. Um, is there a goal as far as how much money you guys want to raise for Cure Search through the catch? Well, we're, we're hoping we get a, a couple thousand people at least. I mean, there isn't a whole lot of, uh, you know, expenses per se. So, you know, if we hand them a, a check between five and ten thousand dollars, you know, we'd be happy. If it's more, that's great. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's I think this is something that might we might even uh, I haven't given it much thought, but even add to next year. You know, you know, the first time somebody does something, you know, it's like so many people didn't know about it. Oh, my God, I didn't know about this. And so maybe we could do it next year. Maybe we could add something to it next year and make it even a lot bigger, you know. Uh, so, uh, you know, what I, my attitude is whatever we can give to them. Um, it's great because you know, anytime we do fundraising during the tour, you know, we're trying to accomplish three things. Number one, we're trying to raise money. Number two, raise awareness for what we're doing. And I think that's just as important as if, if someone didn't know about this year, but they're aware of it, that's it. And number three is to let the kids on the tour, people on the tour to understand how great it is to give back and to be part of something bigger than them. Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing. And I said that in the first podcast that you and I did um, last year is I think that's where you and I really connected is that, you know, yeah, we, we're both baseball players. We're both baseball coaches, but at the end of the day, it's really about teaching these kids life lessons and the importance of giving back is, is so important. So what, what type of feedback have you had from your team, the kids on the tour when you told them that this was going to be one of the events of uh, the 2021 tour? Well, they were pretty excited. Uh, I mean, not only them, but some of the kids that have been on the tour before. A couple of them are running like virtual locations, which is probably what makes me the happiest, to be honest. I mean, the, the fact that they've been on the tour, they're off the tour, and now they're coming back to give back and to do something neat like that. So they all think it's really a cool idea. Uh, you know, I'm sure we'll come up with some other things before the tour. Uh, for instance, I I'd love to get a, a, a ball signed by people at every virtual location. That'd be pretty cool. And then accumulate them. So if I have 50 signed baseballs from everybody who, everywhere that was part of a big virtual location, that'd be cool. But the, the kids just think it's a great idea because every year, like I said, you know, we try to add something in there that, that's kind of crazy and, you know, off, off the uh, – yeah, ordinary, you know, I mean, the kids love running clinics and doing things like that, but, you know, they also love doing something just completely different. So, yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty excited, I think. Yeah, that's cool. So with the, uh, with the virtual locations, do you want the people who are doing a virtual location to kind of do a video of themselves so that, you know, at the end, you're going to try to look and compile a video, you know, of a couple minutes of, hey, here's the virtual catch in Maryland, here's the one in you know, Reading, Pennsylvania, here's the one in Butler, PA, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah we're, we're actually requesting to people everywhere video, whether they're, quote, signed up as a virtual location or other. Because right on the registration, it kind of says if, if your town isn't listed as a virtual location, there's like 50 of them now, just sign up under other. So when people sign up other, I see that, I can contact them and say, hey, listen, you're under other, do you want to be a virtual location? They might say, nah, I just want to play catch with my boy in the backyard. Or they might say, well, you know, I've got like 20 people that might be involved. So then I would get their information, their contact information, and then I would add them as a virtual location, move them under that virtual location. But there'll be a lot of people that are just under, under other. So uh, yeah, but we're going to get everybody, wherever they are, to video and then where we are in Thermont, we're doing a Facebook Live, we're doing a Zoom, we're doing a combination of the two. So when people are playing catch, they can actually see people playing catch everywhere. And then once everything's done, we'll put all these little snippets of video together and make like a little documentary and, and send it out to everybody who's interested in seeing it. So even afterwards, you'll be able to see everybody that played catch. And the night of, we're going to be interviewing people beforehand. We're going to, where are you? How do you get involved? Blah, blah, blah. It'd be cool to see, you know, older people with little kids playing. I know uh, I'm going to have my four-year-old uh, granddaughter out there playing catch with my wife. So that's going to be kind of cool. 
But yeah, everybody's going to video from where they are. And matter of fact, we're going up to Thermont next week and making sure this works like a dry run because uh, it, it's going to be interesting. But yeah, that, that's the big thing. And as we get closer, because we have all the information, we'll send that out of exactly what we want you to do. But yeah, you're right on about the video and they're going to be videoing as it happens and they're going to actually be able to see other people. Yeah, that is, uh, that is so cool. So um, we're just about out of time here, but um, go ahead and give my listeners again, just a real quick cliff notes of how they can, you know, what the registration fee is, um, how, how they can sign up and uh, all that good stuff. Yeah. Well, if they, if they go to my Facebook page, either mine, Jeff Potter or Potter baseball summer tour, You'll be able to get the Sign Up Genius, the registration right there. You click on it, you go in. It's five bucks for kids 12 and under, ten dollars for people 13 and over. The registration is really simple. Uh, you say, I want to register. There's a drop down box with all the virtual locations. Uh, if yours isn't there, uh, just sign up under other. But if yours is there, click on it, sign up. Uh, all you're really requested to do is put your email and stuff so we have that information. It generates an email directly to me. Once you sign up, I'll get a hold of you. Uh, it gives all kind of the instructions, what's going on. Every virtual location has somebody there kind of uh, running things. So the whole sign up is easy. How you pay for it is easy. There's instructions in there about cash, check, Venmo, or what, what have you. And then as we get closer, you know, either us, me, or the virtual location will give you more information. All right. And uh, what's the date and time again? It's June 30th at 7 o'clock at night. And when I say 7 o'clock, that bell rings. Everybody needs to be playing catch. So it's going to actually be kind of an organized thing at all these virtual locations, too. And, you know, they're going to – they already know this. They're going to start corralling people together about four to seven, make sure they're lined up eight feet. You know, the ball is going to be – all the balls are going to be on this side. They're going to have baseballs and – uh you know, they're going to give instructions at five to seven, basically, after the kids have kind of thrown and practiced. It's like, okay, hold all the baseballs. Don't throw them. And at, at seven o'clock, when the whistle blows, man, everybody's going to be playing catch. So uh, that's pretty good. But but uh, also, if people sign up, they got to check with the contact at that uh, location because, like I said, a lot of the locations are doing more than just playing catch. They're actually having like an itinerary or some fun stuff before and after. That's cool. And that is a, uh, that's a Wednesday night, correct? June 30th. It is. We tried to stay away from the weekends with all these kids and tournaments and stuff. We've tried to limit their reasons why they can't get involved. And uh, yeah, we'd even have uh, teams, for instance, that are practicing that night. And they've said, Jeff, you know, I've talked to the coach basically at 10 to seven, we're going to hold up practice. We're going to play catch for 10 minutes, go back to practice. So it, you know, this thing, I have a game, I have practice, I have this, I have that. It, you know, I'm not a baseball player. Uh, you know, if you want to, bottom line, if you want to get involved, it's very easy to get involved. So hopefully, uh, you know, everybody will get excited about it. And I listen, I appreciate you doing this for me, dude. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. So um, anything that, that I can do to help support um, your cause, I'm, I'm happy to do. So I'm, I'm glad we could get on and uh, talk about it a little bit more. I, I think it's a great idea. Um, I hope you guys raise a, a ton of money um, for uh, Cure Search by doing this and you know, definitely wish you the best of luck on the tour. Um, I know in, uh, it, it's tough when I have a guest on twice um, because I, <laughs> I don't wanna get away from my theme by, by asking my final question. So um, as you know, the uh, you know, the subtitle of the tour is Many Little People in Many Little Places, um, which comes from Michael Fronte's song, which says, when many, little piece, when, it, when many little people in many little places do many little things and the whole world changes. So um, I will ask you this question for the second time, even though you answered it last year. But, you know, again, what are one of those little things that Jeff Potter does on a daily basis to help make the world a better place? Well, you know, you just hope that you teach these kids uh, all the life lessons that they need to learn. I mean, I, I think it's really important to teach these kids about all these things that had value you know, 30, 40 years ago when we grew up. You know, the whole thing about, you know, teamwork and loyalty and commitment. And it's funny, Dan, putting this together, this whole thing, it, it kind of every day when I wake up, you know, 
like when I tell you people promise they're going to do things and they don't, it's, it's just like you shake your head sometime where we're so far away from where we need to be in terms of these values that we had as kids. And you just hope that you teach them to these kids and then they teach them to their kids. And I think the most important thing is to, is to be someone who keeps their word, uh, committed to something and sees things through. And you, you try to teach that lesson that, uh, you know, it's important. It's important to see things through and, and to, and to work on things no matter what kind of have that perseverance. So just try to get up every day and do something, you know, worthwhile for somebody. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So again, Jeff, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, do another podcast with me. And again, I hope it creates some interest and you start getting some more um, signups for some more virtual locations, or again, just that other location. I know um, my wife and I already had a commitment, but uh, we're going to be with our grandkids. So um, seven o'clock that Wednesday, we're going to, grab a grandkid and, and play some catch with them as well. So we're excited to, uh, to be part of it on wow. our small little, uh, little way as well. So um, like I said, I think it's a great concept. I, I want to definitely see how it grows um, next year. Cause I think as, as COVID kind of declines, I think this could turn into a really big event for you guys on the tour and, you know, seeing, once we can start getting back into crowds of people, seeing a big crowd of people at one main location and then yeah. all these other virtual locations would be very cool for sure. So um, again, I uh, appreciate the time and uh, for everybody out there listening, be sure to check out my other blogs and podcasts at danclauser.com. Jeff, thanks again. Always appreciate sitting down and uh, talking some baseball with you. And I appreciate it so much. Have a great day and have a safe trip back to PA. All right. Thank you.